Hey, welcome back to another podcast with Mr. Hagen, and we are going to continue looking at the uh, determinants of demand. And in this ca- this video, we're going to look at change in the number of consumers. And my good is going to be houses, houses in Philadelphia, houses in specifically Philadelphia, houses in Philadelphia. And my real world event, the real thing that changes in the world is, uh, let's say that there's an increased crime. And again, I don't know why, but let's say there's increased crime in the city of Philadelphia. Increased crime in Philadelphia. So if we have increased crime in Philadelphia, what are, what are people going to want to do? Well, they're going to want to uh, move out of Philadelphia. So, so let's t- take a look at our, at our uh, graph. So here's going to be the price of housing, specifically in Philadelphia. And this is going to be the quantity of housing in Philadelphia. And of course, you have an upward sloping supply curve, downward sloping demand curve. There's some equilibrium price for housing in Philadelphia. There's some equilibrium quantity of housing in Philadelphia. And uh, we, we get this uh, increase in crime and what's going to happen as a result well obviously people are going to want to move out of the city but what is the determinant that connects to that real world event that's always your first step you've got to go to the real world event and say what determinant would match up with that real world event and in this case I'm going to argue would be change in the number change in the number of consumers change in number of Consumers. That is to say, that the consumers of housing in Phil, uh, in Philadelphia are is going to decrease. Now, let's be really clear about something before we move on. This is different than tastes and preferences. Okay, I'm I'm not saying oh this is a change in tastes and preferences for houses in Philadelphia. No, because this is a change in the actual number of people living in the city available to buy the good. Okay, when you literally are changing the number of people, then your determinant is probably going to be changing the number of consumers. It's probably going to be changing the number of consumers. All right, so it's not like that they don't like Philadelphia housing, but it's just they're not there to buy it because they don't like the crime in the city. So they're moving out of Philadelphia, change in number of consumers. So if you can change, if you have a change in number of people who are living somewhere, then that's usually going to be changing the number of consumers. And it could be because, you know, an increase in the death rate. It could be because people moving in, whatever the case might be. The shift here is going to be the demand curve is going to shift to the left. People don't want as much housing in Philadelphia because there aren't as many people in Philadelphia because of the crime. And that would shift the demand curve into the left to D2. That would decrease the the price and increase the quantity. That would decrease the price and increase the quantity. So housing prices in Philadelphia would go down. The quantity of housing being bought and sold in Philadelphia would go down. And then we have to say, uh, what is that called? That decrease in quantity. What is that called on the demand side? And what is it called on the supply side? On the demand side, it's a decrease in demand because the demand curve shifted into the left. So it was a decrease in demand. On the supply side, we moved along the supply curve. So that's quantity supplied, and it's a decrease because we're going here to the left. It's a decrease in quantity. So that would be a, on the supply side, that would be a decrease in the quantity supplied, a decrease in the quantity supplied. And then we want to say, what is our general rule for change in number of consumers? Our rule is this. Anytime you get an increase in the number of consumers, the demand curve is going to shift to the right. Increase number of consumers, shift right. Decrease in the number of consumers, that's going to cause demand to shift left. Demand shifts left. So increased number of consumers shift right, decreased number of consumers shift left. Of course, we did the decreased number of consumers. The increased number of, cons- increased number of consumers would have been the demand curve shifting to the right, and then everything would have gone the other way. Okay, there's another uh, video on determinants of demand. We'll, uh, this has been Mr. Hagen, and we'll see you 
on the next podcast.